Welcome back to Channel Water. Today we're going to talk about is water invisible? Here in Channel Water we claim that water is in fact invisible, something that the human eye cannot see. Many people react and say, I can see water, I know it's there. This idea is ridiculous. So give me a few minutes and I'll show you, I'll prove to you that water is in fact invisible. First, to understand water, let's start looking at air. Both air and water are clear substances, a medium in which we can be immersed. There is no argument about the fact that air is invisible. Do you agree with that? So, if air is invisible, right now you are immersed in air. Air envelops you. So you don't see it. You don't see the air itself. You don't see the border between air and matter. You don't see the border between air and anything else. You're completely enveloped in it. Once we go underwater, once we are enveloped in water, once water immerses us completely, now we are exactly in the same situation. Water becomes completely invisible to our eyes. We don't see the borders between water and the objects next to us. Our entire surrounding is visible to us. But now, when we look at air, air looks like water. So, what we think that we see, that we call water, is actually just the border between water and air. Those two don't mix. Light can either go through water and we see it as a clear substance, or at a certain angle, light will reflect back to our eyes. And now we're looking at some kind of a mirror. But since it's always moving, those changes, we get those ripple effects between seeing and not seeing, seeing and reflecting. And that's what we call water. We think that's the look of water. So we agreed that air is invisible. But in air too, there are forms. There is movement of air that we don't see. We don't see the wind unless there's dust or debris in it. We don't see movement in just clear air. Here we can see a photographic technique that allows us to see air. Now we can see the movements of the air that normally we don't detect with our eyes. So again, there are forms in air that are invisible to our eyes. So air is invisible. Air's form is invisible to our eyes. If I'm underwater, I can see a bubble of air moving through the water. So now I can say, I know air is there. But that doesn't mean that I see the air. So here we can see that with water and air, we have this special relationship where we can't see it. Our naked eyes cannot detect the movements and complexities of form within this medium. But once we have water or air interacting with each other, we can detect the border. So we can say, I know that there's air over here. I know that there's water over there but I cannot see it. I cannot tell you further than that what form, what is happening within that medium. So what you before pointed out to tell me that is water, that you can see water, that's what water looks like, now is actually air. They look exactly the same. Well, they don't look. What we see is the border between them. And the border between them will always be the same. And you can look at it from both sides. So that's another evidence that the thing itself is invisible because you can see it from both sides. So I think we need to put a very specific category when it comes to water and air and the relationship between them. We can always see the border between water and air, but we don't see the border between air and the tree, water and the algae or the fish. We only see between the two. So a bubble of air in water, a drop of rain in the air. I can see the two, meaning I know they're there, but they're still invisible to me. That drop of water inside of it is still clear and invisible to me. I just see the air and enveloping the water. Same in the case of the bubble of air. Now I can say, I see the bubble of air. I know it's there, but when I look into it, it's still clear and I still cannot see the air. So that's where the confusion lies, in the fact that we can identify where they are, if they are in relationship to each other, 
water and air, but we cannot see them. When we look at the images of air and what it looks like, when we look at images of faces of water and what water looks like, we can see that within this entire medium that is enveloping this whole world, there are movements, there are forms, and those are the forms that we want to focus on. Those are the forms that are the origin of the movement of life. So what I ask from you is to review it yourself, whether you go on the water, look at videos on the water, try to find out what does water look like if you think it's visible to you. Describe to us what does water look like to you other than the border between water and air, other than that moving mirror that we see from both sides. We have a longer video about water, the invisible soul. If you take the time, there's a lot of information there about why it matters that we can't see water. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see what water does look like, please go to facesofwater.com.